Hi, good afternoon and welcome to the Berkeley Art Museum and Pacific Film Archive. My name is Susan Oxby and welcome to First Person Cinema, Marie Menken, Margaret Tate and Uta Arand. So we've had the pleasure this week of, of, of welcoming Uta Arand to present these three programs. Um, she's based in Berlin and it's a real treat to have her here in Berkeley as our guest. Her works are part of this lyrical tradition of, um, of a vibrant first person cinema. And um, just before proceeding with a short introduction, I wanted to mention that on behalf of Ban PFA, we thank the National Endowment for the Arts for the support of the series, as well as German films. Um, and the series represents Uta Aran's third visit to Ban PFA. Previously, she was with us in 2009, and then again in, in 2012. It's always a pleasure to see her films and to hear her speak about her aesthetic. Um, Uta Aran, if you're new to her work, is an independent filmmaker, teacher, and curator, and has long championed the works of independent artists, filmmakers. Originally born in Frankfurt, she grew up in Berlin, where she studied film at the uh, film school there between 1979 and 1985. And since the mid-80s, she has produced a, a lovely body of, of works. I think there's some 44 titles in her filmography. Um, but these works range from very, very short pieces of a few minutes in length to works of close to an hour. Her format throughout her entire career has been uh, celluloid and shooting on 16 millimeter format with a Bolex camera, which she generally holds in her hands. So her own camera work is um, a wonderful extension of her own body and it has a um, very kind of heartfelt and expressive quality to the way that she uses the functions on a Bolex camera, which is actually a wonderful camera for doing all kinds of in-camera editing and filming techniques. The camera itself is, is wound up with a spring motor and runs um, in, in lengths of only up to 22 seconds. But as you see in Uta's hands, um, these works are extremely expressive and her eye is always looking for light for um, representing the real world and with representational imagery, but then creating uh, pieces that are very poetic in spirit, either portraits, um, studies of the landscape, or the world around her. Um, often she's, while well, she is gathering imagery in a silent fashion, shooting silent film, and then many of her films do have sound. So it's another gathering process for her. And then some of the films are intentionally silent, as we will see this afternoon. The longer work, Building Underground, is a silent film. In die Erge Gebau is the German title. Um, but I think what's so interesting in looking at Uta's films is um, appreciating how she uses, uses uh, the camera and makes um, editing decisions um, in these very um, poetic works. This afternoon's program uh, is a total running time of 76 minutes and represents um, uh, four individual films. I want to welcome Uto around to introduce those four films. We'll watch the program straight through and then have time at the end for any comments or questions for Uto around. Please help me in a warm welcome. Yeah, thank you for coming on this nice afternoon. So, um, I thought it's interesting. Susan Susan curated the program, and um, she put Dwight Yana in the beginning, which was actually the first film of Mary Menken which I have seen. It is uh, in the collection in Berlin in the Arsenal, and it is um, an animation. She is single single frame uh, film. You will see very light, very playful, and um, I liked it a lot when I saw it. And um, this film plus the writings from uh, Jonas Mikas about. Um, Mary Menken in the in his movie journal um, brought me to made me very curious that I would wanted to see more of her work and so we were able to uh, to buy prints for the for the Arsenal distribution later through the monthly series which I uh, organized uh, in Berlin from 1990 to 95 um, mm -hmm. which was focusing on the work of women and later especially experimental films and because I um, we had decided that we will only show uh, work by women, so I was forced, in a way, to, to research more and to look more. So um, th that made me very happy when I discovered the Menken films, and then later the Margaret Tate films, a Scottish filmmaker, 
who Mencken actually she died in uh, 68 um, she made about 18 short films um, Tate uh, was a Scottish filmmaker based in Orkney she was trained as a, a doctor but she decided when she was about 40 years maybe not not really maybe 35 years old to become a filmmaker and she uh, went to the film school in Rome and then later back to Edinburgh and Orkney Islands where she was born she made um, all her films except her last film was independent produced no money no support <clears throat> very um, you can say, I mean, it's hard if you get no financial support for what you are doing, but you still continue doing it. So um, that had a big uh, impression and impact and c uh, courage, courageous me, courageous me, I don't know. Um, I mean, helped me also to continue doing the work. And um, then after... Hmm, Place of Work, oh yeah, so Susan chose uh, A Place of Work, which is a longer piece by uh, Tate, you will see, it is uh, in the house where she, I think where she grew up, and she had to give it up, it was sold, and um, it is a little bit in the section of a bye-bye um, uh, process that she decided to, to, to really give, um, uh, devoted a film to, to this house of her parents and her upbringing and also, but which became the place of work, which, which we, you will see uh, how, where she had her little studio and editing place. Um, my own film, Building Underground, um, was uh, developed over a period of three weeks. And this, uh, the reason was uh, I decided I will um, follow the building really from the first, um, we call in German Spatenstich, so for the first spade, you know, in the earth when they really start. Um, symbolically, the building, and uh, until the end when the museum was um, finished, that means it is a collection of um, ethnological or ethnographic, or I don't know, third world is out of uh, political, <laughs> we don't say this anymore, but this is a wonderful collection with pieces, Asian, African, uh, and South American art, and uh, so I followed until the um, the, it was re-established and all the pieces uh, went back in the museum and found their final place. And I, I thought about um, just uh, the decision how to structure it. It was every six weeks I went to Zurich. So the museum is in Zurich um, from Berlin. And I um, had chosen two days just randomly. So um, when I came there, I was looking, what are they doing? And was just filming... Uh, or, or, ends, or responding for what I saw. So it was no real, um, how can I say, not an intention that I want to film this or that. And it was actually uh, also for myself the first time that I was really following a building, a building, uh, <laughs> building, building. So uh, I had no idea how many aspects and how many work is included and um, yeah. And in the end, uh, Susan decided to finish with Moonplay, which is also just a Moonplay for Mary Menken and uh, really represented her, her spirit of lightness. And um, yeah, so I enjoy the program. And then we, if you like, we can talk afterwards. Actually, the last film was a big surprise because we have a print as a silent. I had never heard of this sound. So, you see, different versions <laughs> in various <laughs> three existing. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, there's no mic. But I, I, I think with several of Mary Mackin's films that she's added sound later. So there are different versions. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I don't know. Uh, we, I will, I will, I will, I will research a little bit okay. because the titles are there, and uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. So, um, I don't know. Do you have any question, or, or do you want to tell me something about your thoughts, or, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'll try to ask a question. It might take me a second. 
it may be a collaborative question between the two of us. So I'm, um, I'm really taken by the rhythms you create. The, the more, you know, the fast, disruptive kind of moments, and how they move into the like longer cadences. And I'm really curious how you make those choices, especially if you're doing a lot of in-camera editing. So like when you're doing, um, when you're, I, I, I imagine that a lot of those fast sort of staccato moments are in-camera moments. And I'm just curious uh, about your process of making that decision to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, and then, um, I don't know, I mean, it, yeah, anything you can say about that or how you generate those rhythms, I'd be interested to hear. Mm. Yeah, I, I think, um, I mean, most of the, the, I call it clusters when, when it's edited in camera. So while, while filming and, um, as Susan said, I mean, the, the, the camera is a, a small handheld camera. I never use a tripod, so it is really an extension of my physical uh, movements and I'm going around things, approaching, going back. So, um, and I also use the, uh, sometimes the, the focus because uh, the lenses are pretty small. You can change the, le the focus and also the aperture, I think. Um, so that that has a kind of musical element for me to to I mean this is this is really intuitive how I use it when I'm filming so because it is in time I don't do it do two times it is just once and and of course I'm in this film I mean I was there I was at the side I was looking observing finding my interest in their work and sometimes. Um, of course, the, the I mean, some things are really only one moment, but some things are like uh, longer work processes, like when, when they when, when I'm looking down and the, the, the shadow thing with the with them, with the steel uh, fine things when they are laying them out. So, um, yeah, it's difficult to tell. I mean, one is uh, the, the bolex makes the sound. So when you, you know, you hear it. You So one has really a kind of metric um, experience oneself while one is doing it. It is not like in the digital cameras when you maybe sometimes even don't know am I taping or not or what. So you don't, I think you don't hear it. So um, that that helps the kind the, the pace of of time what one is creating in a new way because there's a new time created in through the filmmaking. The, the second thing is, of course, editing. The, so I go, go later to the editing table and I can, um, sequences I find too long. I Basically, it is uh, uh, taking things out. And and then, of course, uh, in this, uh, some some sometimes you see I film black and white and color on, in one situation. So and then the editing was, uh, of course, here to bring the, the two things together or, or other um, elements of montage. I call this montage. I don't know. It's not very, but but, yeah. When when you when different moments come together, yeah. I don't know how to explain it, but it is the, um, and and then the detachment and touchment. So so also to keep a distance in in very brief moments, and like something you see, more you don't want really to grab it. So you you leave it. You go around. It's more atmospheric to to understand things or to to show also emotions towards something, so not in a. Um, but I think it's very personal, you know. If you choose the long uh, approach to something or look long on a flower, or you just have a brief moment, so I don't know. I have this idea. It's in the end, it's the same, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Peggy. Uh, I I found that the the themes that are going through them, except for some reason I cannot remember what number film one was. Maybe because it was running in real so fast and late. But 
uh, it was just uh, the, the different, I mean, I was immediately struck by all of those that are all about, when I, it, it doesn't seem like an a, a American kind of thing at all, or even a German thing that I've seen under, under construction and all that. You know, it seems to be a Swiss thing. And uh, uh, it, uh, it seemed to be much more uh, in another time, too. You know, I'm sure that it looked quite, you know, it would be different. And all the different uh, motions and all the different materials. And all, uh, it was just very, very fascinating. Mm -hmm. And it was so different. Your, your, your uh, piece, that it was so different than Margaret's. You know, hers, hers made me afraid that her place would be, you know, sort of, there it just barely not, not to, you know, uh, uh, ruining everything, you know, mm -hmm. right along the, her garden which was, you know, sort of struck. And then at the end of it, it looked like, okay, yeah, it looked, it's sort of planned out. They just pushed it there to make, but, you know, it's not destroyed everything. And uh, it, uh, just the, all these different things all at once, you know, they just short, very short, uh, short differences uh, of time and, and all these different layers. Mm -hmm. uh, they seem to be done in, in order, but there were so many layers of different kinds of activities that was so interesting. And, I also thought the men there was so beautiful, <laughs> I must say. You know, I, I seldom see people going around uh, in sort of later holes and like things, you know, with really great muscles and that sort of thing. It was, it was, it was, uh, uh, it seems silly to think about these things, but it really is a, a kind of thing, of, a, a, a way of going into the world and, and making things mm -hmm. that is different than, than, uh, very many people. I mean, I, I don't see it very often. Yeah, but I, but uh, Maggie, they they do the same thing even now. It's not so long ago. It is a lot of physical work when you construct a house. It's incredible. I mean, this is really people who are doing it. Of course, they have machines, but literally, these things. What you need to to make concrete is really you have to combine all these steel things, and they have to be knitted. Mm -hmm. knitted or, or you know it's like textile for me was it and I uh, later I asked sometimes what are these people I said they are drillers also drilling and this is very hard work when you have the floor and you have almost hardly a balanced feeling on the floor so this is this is even when they built this one I, I swear think, they were uh, right. the okay. same thing and you need a lot of wood for the concrete you build, I mean, here in the, in the States, I'm always amazed now because I'm more sensitive for buildings. All wood. C here just, I was two days ago, we walked. It's incredible. Okay. Yeah, right. But yeah, I think maybe the idea of an of a um, something like a, a museum is part of the, the kind of, it's a, it, it has a, a totally different relationship to the, uh, it's an art, you know, so you're developing an art thing anyway. And uh, it was, it uh, reminds me of the, the one in Berlin that has, uh, that was finally put together out of, uh, out of junk from World War II back to where it was and then changed it so that, so, so that it, and so that each one is, is uh, it, it, you know, I, I didn't see as much continuity because of the stage it was in when we saw yours. But you know when then when you can actually see everything, then then they seem to be more content. You know th this one looked like it it was had an awful lot of, ch of changes all the way through it. You know inside inside and outside or whatever. And yeah, no, I mean this was particular because they built. That's why the title is a building underground. It was literally built underground, not to disturb the. Um, the other parts of the museum, which is from the 19th century buildings. So they, they, the, the two architects, uh, um, a Swiss and an, and an Austrian, they made the concept and convinced the museum. So um, we have just the entry as a spectacular thing, but then literally we go down in the, in the, earth, in the, in the ground. Yeah. Do you know what uh, time Margaret's was? Or because it seemed like it was had some kind of, of uh, of airplanes that were flying overhead. No, I mean, it was uh, from 76. Oh, she okay. made it in 76. And um, I think she filmed not a year, but maybe three quarter of a year. Uh, so we have the seasons also changing, but it was from 76. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Somebody else can cook down to you. <laughs> Thank you.
Hi, thanks for your beautiful films. Um, uh, my question is about your editing process outside of the camera. So I understand mm -hmm. you edit a lot in camera, but um, especially in the um, Indie Ale de Gebaut, uh, there's so many beautiful rhymes between images, um, you know, just geometrically and yeah. um, patterns. And so I'm wondering if you take notes while you're filming every day, like, you know, if you notice something that you already filmed before, or if you find it in editing after when you're looking at the film. Yeah. yeah. No, I, basically, I mean, this, this I develop on the editing table. So um, also here, the, the film is about, um, I don't know, 42 minutes, I think. Maybe I had um, two times or also two and a half times more footage. So uh, it was also a selecting process and then building. I mean, the one, for instance, the sequence when, when the walls are just, uh, I mean, this is really editing. So I, I was fascinated when I was there. I filmed it this way, but then to bring it into a kind of con continuity between the different sequences, this was really editing work. So um, it's a mixture. It's really a mixture because I also like editing uh, on the table to create these um, uh, on, a, on a different pace, you know, like like may, maybe more a nar narrative element is coming in in the in the montage process. Um, so it took some time to, yeah. And also it was not clear if, if the film will be silent from the beginning. So I had also taped, you can imagine, a lot of sounds like orchestra. Um, but then I decided because uh, basically it, is, it has this very rhythmic element, so I, I, I decided it's it's nice and it stays quiet. Yeah. So and and no, I don't work with notes. I don't. I mean, I I had the idea. I, I made a film before about the film museum in Berlin. It was a um, commission work, more or less. Somebody asked me. The, the film museum asked me. So for the final four weeks of, uh, but this was all interior uh, architecture, but that brought me on this interest because I was fascinated when I came and this was only in three weeks, really every day I went in the other film and uh, the changing and also um, work to, to, to observe uh, the work. And, it, uh, and then I heard about the museum and then I thought, no, I go now into the longer process. So um, then, um, yeah, I was thinking, um, before, maybe a little bit basic, I thought, yeah, it should be black and white, also mainly black and white. And of course, I thought about Russian cinematography <laughs> and workers and uh, body presence. It was clear that it will be quite physical, the whole um, physical and architectural, so more abstract, you know, like sketches or, or the, 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 the thinking of architecture. So these two elements, anyway, are fascinating me. So it, it came together, and um, it was it was interesting because I was pulled in also. But um, I filmed every th six weeks, so that means I was developing the footage, have seen the footage, you know. So so I knew after a while. Oh, okay, I have this and that. So maybe we want some snow now, or um, I don't know some. Uh, some children or sometimes yeah or or I was uh, difficult was the concrete because I saw that they are um, like in the Japanese garden you know they, they they go with this very smooth to bring out the the air um, I had no idea about concrete you know it's not it's also very interesting you think oh yeah they, they pump the concrete and that's it but um, it's not so interesting they uh, not so easy they have to really bring out the air and so they I wanted this so <laughs> This was a little bit tricky. I asked always, when uh, no, we don't know. It depends on weather and it depends on that. And yeah, so I was, I, I finally had one situation. Hi. That's Hi. Great. <laughs> um, well, on on the first one, um, what were they doing exactly out out in? Um, I'm sorry, on the on the uh, uh, the Atwood. Um, they were they building building a trench. You may have mentioned it in the first, in, in, in the the, the uh, work at home. Wait, where are we? I'm sorry. The in uh, the Tate. Yes. In the Tate. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what. They okay. Were. So no idea. Uh, uh, she said something about destroying the garden, and it, I I didn't know if you had mentioned. No, that. I mean this was make we, we all receive things differently. 
no uh, yeah, so yeah, she yeah. she was a little bit she thought oh god they are out of the they're coming closer but uh, i think it yeah, was yeah, just yeah. street work yeah so i, I thought um, maybe you mentioned before that they no. were coming to okay and that was that was just a lovely piece then um uh the construction of the museum um you said underground mm -hmm. did they build it under the other museum partly they they connected that's why they lifted up they digged out uh, below the the old villa there's one shot where you maybe see they the it was like venice suddenly so the whole house was on on poles 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 whatever poles, yeah. um to hold it so it was really delicate and difficult they had some cracks afterwards in the in the building but it was not too difficult but it was um risky so they they digged under this building to bring then the whole new museum was also it's connected to the old one so they wanted to go under the other one did they actually have to lift up the old museum no no they didn't lift okay. it up it, they just left it but they dig it and then and then what about the um that little um buddha in the garden yeah i, I was worried about it it had sort of a, not much over top of its head and uh they seem to be building around it Mm, oh no, beginning. this little Buddha, I mean this little figure which is sleeping maybe? Yes, you mean? yes. No, this is actually, um, this is not, this is a, a Swiss, this is a little, uh, that's a little boy. And uh, oh, okay. it is really a middle European art from the 19th century and belongs to the garden and was always there. And it was, it has a kind of little house, I think. Maybe it was. Um, I don't know exactly the story behind it, but it has a kind of history in the in the whole setting of the houses. It it was uh, it it was a, a private home earlier. This park and the houses and the villas and and um, oh. Richard Wagner was composing there. Oh. Tristan and Isolde in the park, and so many special things happened in this park. So this little boy. <laughs> He's just there, lying there since, I don't know, 1800 something. Oh my gosh. Um, and then you had a pinhole shot. Yeah, but this was not a pinhole. This was just from the um, pipes. The pipes, which they, yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they, make, they make holes, you know, they had, oh. they had drillers, which can create just a hole. And how long did they have to wait to breathe the concrete? Oh, how, that, how that they, I don't know because I was away and after six weeks it was fine. How did they breathe it? Did they put in fans? I'm no, no, kidding. no, no. It, it it was open. It is just it was it. just yeah. beautiful. Yeah, Kate. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>